Hello guys, welcome back to SWS Boxing and I'm delighted to be joined with Andrew Deeker from Anything Blows and we're here predicting Cam uh, Shelto Cameron v Katie Taylor too and I'm, yeah, just delighted to get you back on. Yeah, sorry it's been a while Sam, but pleasure to be back on. Both been a bit busy recently, but finally here and it's here for a big one. Mm -hmm. All good, mate. And um, yeah, we've got, for, for me... Um, really stacked card with a few title fights as well and a few big prospects. Of course, uh, one we'll start off with one that you that you really wanted to speak about. Um, Giorgio Vasoli, I think that's how I pronounce it. He's making his pro debut against Lee Anthony Sibley, who's three and one. So, I'll let I'll, yeah, I'll let you start as as you like, Giorgio. Yeah, there's a few talents on the card, but one person I've got to know recently in the Origin Gym is Giorgio Vizioli. Highly uh, highly rated prospect, Italian, but um, English-born. He's won the ABAs and the Nationals in two different ways. I believe 63 and 57, if not 60 and 63. Really class amateur. He's beaten a lot of good guys in the amateurs, and this is going to be his professional debut, and I just can't wait for it. He trains out at the Origin Gym with Mark Tibbs. And what better way to make your professional debut than in Ireland? I didn't know that his opponent was three and one. So that's a good test for him. Hopefully he comes out in a four-round contest. And yeah, Giorgio is looking in the best shape he is. And great way to end off the year with one and no just before going into the new year. Mm -hmm. And I don't know much about him, but I've heard uh, good things. Of course, you've just said some. I've heard good um, stuff from the Orange and Jim about him. And of course... Mark Tibbs doesn't train somebody who's like, you know, you have to be talented to be trained in that gym. Uh, I am expecting quite, um, no pressure on him, but I am expecting quite a bit, you know. And I uh, hope he gets the job done, but he's got a tough opponent who's fighting out of Bedford, Luton. But no, Bedford, Luton, Marbella as well, he, it says on Boxer. <laughs> so. He's in a Conor Ben, all third Spain, Australia. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I think Giorgio uh, will win. Uh, I don't think he'll stop him, but I reckon he'll get a 40-36 win. But yeah, all the best to him. Yeah, no, 100%. And another thing just to add on there before we move on is he's a southpaw, so as tricky as they get, and southpaws are taking over boxing right now. Mm -hmm, indeed. Uh, we've got, um, of course, Zelfa Barrett, 22 wins, uh, two defeats against Constantine Ion, who's... Um, 10, 4, and 2, 8 rounds in the Super Featherweight division. Of course, Constantine Ayo's 10 wins coming off a defeat to Akin Fias, who it was a decent fight, but I mean, you would expect Zelfa to show levels in this fight. No if, no disrespect to Ayo, but Zelfa, you know, surely wins this back with the big boys, you know, hunting down for one of those world titles. Uh, I think it would either be like a like a shot out on points or it'd be good to see Zell forget the stoppage. Um as you know he has those 16 knockouts of course um lost to that Rakimov who we saw Cordina uh, get a big win over. Um Rakimov's a good opponent and uh maybe a rematch down the line who knows. It then but he took he did come back stronger and I think yeah this one then you're back in it. I think Zelfa Barrett will win. I think it'll be fairly comfortable on points. Let's say eighty to seventy-one. He might get he might get a knockdown on the way, but I think Zelfa should have it pretty comfortably, in my opinion. But good luck to both. And who knows if Ion causes the upset, then where does that put his career? You know what I mean. So this yeah. could turn his career around, and this is a big step up for him. But I think Zelfa Barrett should be too much for him. And how many rounds is this one? Six or eight? Oh, it's eight rounds, mate. It's eight. Yeah, I, th I think he does it over the distance. Yeah, I I agree with you. So we're both saying uh, Zelfa Barrett on points. That's what we're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, next up, we've got the Celtic Super Featherweight title. Um, of course, they've both fought on small hall shows. Um, sort of, but if you know, I've watched a few of their fights. Um, of course... Yeah, you've got John Cooney, who's 9-0. I'll just say a few who he's beaten, just a few that you might know. Lewis Norman, ain't, um, Mendoza. You know Mendoza, don't you? Yeah, but Grevin. no, both Norman and Mendoza. Yeah, Grevin and Angel Gomez, I would say, are his big wins. 
Oh, was Angel the one that drew with John Harding Jr.? Angel, no, that's was that not Angel him. Fernandez, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure. I get mistaken with all of them, really. Some yeah, there's so many of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Liam Gaynor, ten and four. Um, with yeah, ten and four. Uh, no knockouts, but he's he's coming off two defeats. But if you watch those fights, they were very good fights. And against Carl Murphy, he's had two fights against Carl Murphy, lost. But Cole Murphy, I've had him on the channel before, Cole. Top amateur, top boxer, and I can see him going far, Cole Murphy. But Liam Gaynor's no shame in losing that. He lost to Cole the first one. I think he lost 77-75, which is very tight. I think I agree with the decision. Liam got, he said he got all done by then. He, uh, but then he did beat Ricky Starkey on points, who's a tough operator. Then lost to uh, Cole in another tight battle but it was stopped by a head clash and, you know, that's annoying. But And then he fought Levi Smith, who uh, lost 39-37, but he's been in close fights. Um, could potentially be the last role of the dice for him, uh, like last big role, but he does train with Alex Machajev, who um, is a good trainer. Um, but I think records are for DJs. And even though, <laughs> as we say always, you may say, oh, he's lost his last two fights, but look at the caliber he's been in there with. And it's I think he's he is a great he is a good fighter. And Liam always comes for a war. And I'm I like Liam as a person and as a fighter. I think he's entertaining to watch. And uh it's for the Celtic, I think he'll be up for this one. I think he'll uh I don't think he'll be happy. Um he's had a bit of a rough uh bit of a rough year, but I think he doesn't want to, you know, have a third defeat in a row because where does he go from there? So, but yeah, John Cooney as well. He's nine and zero with two knockouts. Um, you know, it's everyone saying Cooney, Cooney all day long. But mate, I, I'm 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 thinking Liam Gaynor to be honest. I reckon he can he can spring the upset. Whether that's knockout, probably not. They don't. They're not. I wouldn't say they're massive hitters against John's first sort of, you know. But I, no, I'm no, i saying Liam Gaynor on uh, a points win. I'm saying Liam Gaynor on points. Ooh. And it's and 10 rounds is... uh, for you to know, and it's for the Celtic, if I've said that. Yeah, right. I've got it up here on Boxrec on my phone. Um, I'm going to disagree with you on this one, not just to make the interview um special, but the prediction special. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I think John Cooney's got this. Pardon, I don't want to get cancelled there because that's that surname. Lol. But yeah, I've got John winning that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so John on points, would you say? Yeah, look, this is one of those fights that either someone gets stopped 8th or ninth, or it goes a uh, decision. Yeah, because if there's a stoppage, it will be the 8th, the ninth, the 10th, but yeah. Yeah, because how wear worn out they are and just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But Liam's gone to the trenches, and I think that's where he'll prevail when the 8th, the 9th, and 10th will go his way. But it'll be a good fight, and half these fights are hard to predict. Like, they could go either way, but, you know... And to, to people who I don't think is going to win, prove me wrong, because I've had um interview this boxer. I said... I predicted he was going to lose. He messaged me, uh, he watched the prediction and said, I'm going to prove you wrong. And he, <laughs> and he, and he did as, uh, I see him on the fight night. So I was there, you know, it was a small was a top tier show. Um, and he, and he, and he, he messaged, he, he saw me there and said, I'm going to prove you wrong tonight. And I'll say, I said, yeah, good luck. Please do. And he, and he messaged me the next morning and said, I told you so with a win. <laughs> I love it. So, don't take it personally. I'm just uh, to anyone out there. I'm just making a prediction. No, it's a prediction. And they, yeah. you know, if you've got a personal connection between a fighter, you keep that to yourself. But again, we're breaking it down, and it's who he thinks going to win. Doesn't it, there's no personal attachment prove, to it. Prove me wrong, though. Yeah. You know what? I say no personal attachment to it. I'm probably the most biased person when it comes to this. But as of recently, I've started changing stuff up. So yeah. Yeah, it's all right, mate. Um, we all have our favourites. Oh yeah, of course. Which you'll probably see in a in a, in a few minutes. <laughs> uh, we've got Emmett Brennan, who's one and zero. V Jamie Morsey, who's five and zero with one with one draw. Um, for the Celtic light heavyweight, 
of course, Emmett's only one and oh, but uh, for you people that don't know about him, he had a like a big amateur career. So, you know, one fight, then he's um, let me check who he's for. That's a that was the angel who drew to John Harden Jr. <laughs> That's who Emmett beat, uh, which was a shutout points, so looked really good. But he's against Jamie Morsey, who's five and oh, with one knockout, one draw. Last three fights have been well, eight two eight rounders, one ten rounder. Ben McGiven, he beat, um, which was good. Kevin Cronin, both the fights were wars as well. Um, he is the current light heavyweight Celtic champion, is um, M- Morsey. Um, but yes, they're two. Emmett, of course, ah, uh, this is interesting. It could not go. You know what I mean? It could go the distance. It could not. They're both heavy. Wouldn't go. The record doesn't. Yeah, so think, like heavyweight contest, both heavy hitters. Eventually, I think they'll get some knockouts, and I think it will come down to who wants it more. So, same with like all of the fights, really. But who I think, especially this one, will come down to who wants it more. Emmett has had a big amateur career could that help him or could Jamie that he's done the eight and the ten rounders before that could help him as well if it goes to the back end of the fight it's it's a tough one if you ask me but if I'm honest I'm I'm gonna go I've been saying that it's gonna end in a knockout and I'm not gonna track back and say it's gonna go points because I look a bit silly now but I'm gonna I'm gonna say a knockout I, I like both. I spoke. I spoke to both on Insta before. But if I have to edge to one, I would edge to uh, Jamie Morsey. Yeah, I'm gonna agree with you on that one. I do like Emmett Brennan, and I have heard about him in that amateurs against something you say there one and zero versus five zero and one. That one being a draw, not a defeat. Uh, many people will look at it like, oh, he's only one and zero, but it's a stacked amateur pedigree. Um. Like you said earlier. Oh, and like by the way, anyway. I'm saying, um, oh, it's eight rounds, so I'm going to say round six to Morsi. Round six to Morsi. I see Emmett winning this via decision, or but what what I think will happen is that the only route to success for Emmett would, would be decision, but I see Jamie Morsi getting him out between five to seven. I don't think it reaches the eighth and final round, so I'm going to go seventh yeah. round uh, TKO for Jamie. So I'm going around earlier, he's going around later, but yes. Uh, then we've got Sky Nicholson v Lucy <laughs> Wildheart. Do you want People's... me to go first or do you want to go first? I'll go first. People are saying it's it's a tight one. I just think it's a matter of... I don't want to... I, I'm just going to say it, yeah. Sky Nicholson is going to win this by unanimous decision. And people... Clip this all you want, yeah. And I, mate, you know what? Yeah, I'm just thinking. Sky Nicholson, yes, Lucy Wildheart is did well against Mayer, but she didn't. Yes, she went the distance with Michaela Mayer, but she didn't do anything. Yes, Michaela's there, and Lucy had 14 hours notice or whatever, but she didn't do anything. She didn't want to engage. She's had a few good wins, but I think it's whoever wins this will get themselves into a maybe a Commonwealth or the world title or European. But I'm saying Sky or, um, unanimous. What's your opinion? Um, I don't think they go back down to that level purely because Sky Nicholson is the interim world champion and they're only going to want to go yeah, so up. Go just the winner gets the world title shot. That's what we're saying. And I believe it is against Amanda Serrano. Uh, another thing I'm very surprised with both the female fights on this card, but again, that Amanda Serrano was a one off. Um, they haven't moved up to three rounds. So just before I give my prediction, do you think the women should go up to three rounds or do you think they should keep that to two minute rounds? Sorry. <laughs> I, I don't really know, to be honest. It's just a bit of a, bit of a weird one, really, but we'll see what happens because. I don't know. I can't. I can't. Mm. I think it um depends on the individual because I've heard girls say this and I've had other girls say that. So, and, and this is one that favoritism is going to come out. Lu- Lucy Wildhurt, I've seen her at the Churchill gym on Instagram recently. She looks like she's been training all around and she looks more than ready to prepare. Obviously, Sky Nicholson eight and zero. Oh. Lucy Wildhurt ten and two. Um, Sky Nicholson did want to step up, and I believe this is 
one of her biggest step ups so far, if not the biggest. Sky is an amazing boxer, one of my favorite boxers, regardless male or female. One of my favorite boxers to watch. She's got a great style. Southport just could watch for hours on loops. Got two of the best in her corner in Eddie Lam and Bradley Ski. Bradley Ski obviously recently joined winning her since the Mexico fight, winning her interim world title. Sky is one of those women that uh, I see until it goes to the world level. I don't see her losing. And again, I don't see her losing still. So again, Lucy Wilder, all the best to her, all mm -hmm. the utmost respect to her. It's a great 50 50 contest. If not, I'd edge Sky 60 40 because anything can happen in these type of fights. But I've got Sky Nicholson winning this fight. And I think she wins it over a 10 round contest by decision. But she has proven to knock her opponents down. So you'll never know. But yeah. Sky late stoppage, if not another clinical masterclass <laughs> performance, a shutout um, 100 to 90. No disrespect to Lucy. Just believe that's the way it's going to go. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, mate. Um, we agree. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, Thomas Carty six and O v Dan Garber mm -hmm. five and one, both had six fights. Um, Thomas Carty, bit of a knockout artist, of course, coming off, um, yeah, just his last five fights, all knockouts, especially last time I go out against McFarlane. Very impressed. I think he's a bit of a machine. Of course, I've interviewed Dan Garber. He is confident going into this fight. Um. And why wouldn't he? I can't see Dan like going to stand and brawl because I think Carty is the one who will be pressing the fight, who will be the aggressive. And in my opinion, Carty will try and take his head off in the opening two rounds. And I think said to Dan, and he said he needs to box well, needs to be smart. He can't switch off because if he switches off, he's gonna you know, he's, he's, it's not going to go well. You Well, you can never switch off in heavyweight boxing or boxing <laughs> in general. You can just get clipped with one shot. Uh, Dan Garber. But Dan is coming off a first-round win over a good Indian opponent who was 3-0 and going into his fight. So he stopped him in round one. Uh, but Dan did suffer a defeat earlier this year to Lamar Griggs. He, but I think it is good. He was meant to fight. Uh, Friday just gone, but uh, in Leeds, but this opportunity came out and he had to pull out that fight in case, you know, head clashes just gets cut. So I thought two camps really rolled into one, but even though it's like a week later, but you know what I mean? Dan will be up for this. He he, he won't be here to roll over. Um, It'll be tough for him. I think Dan will... The first two rounds, Carty will be really dangerous for Dan. And that's, I don't think we'll see Dan doing much in the opening two rounds. I think he'll just try and move, block the shots, you know, because Carty will come out wild. I think Carty will be, will ca probably um, catch him, although I'd like to see Garber do it. I think Carty will catch him round five or six. Uh, but Dan's, Dan will be tough for him. Uh, and, um, you know, all the best to both, but I think Carty will win five round five or six and uh, maybe line up to fight Johnny Fisher. Who knows? That would be a good fight, Carty Ooh. Fisher. But or is Dan um a bogey fight for him? Who, who knows? But I I think if I'm honest, I'm gonna say as much as I, I want Garber to win and I would like like to see an upset, uh, but I do like Carty as well. I've 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 watched him a bit a bit of a fan of Carty as well. A big fan of both, but if I'm on, if I'm completely honest, I'm going to say Thomas Carty round. Um, what did I say? Five and four, did I? I believe so. I can't. I can't remember. I, I was too busy looking at the previous opponents. My bad. Yeah, but I I think Carty will win four or round four, five or six. So it's an eight rounder. No, and four and five. I'm saying to Carty. I'm saying between round four and five. Yeah. Um, in the, his last contest, I believe, which was on the Casey Taylor, Chantal Cameron, the first on the undercard, I remember this fight. He won by a third round TKO. He's a big fan favourite out there, and I remember the press and all the media building him up all fight week. Dan Gobler, I think I've, I've heard of him. I just haven't seen any of his fights. I, I, I do think he gets him out of there. I think it's going to be one of those fights like a Johnny Fisher, Harry Armstrong, and he's just going to stay in there for a bit. He's going to clip him early, and then he's going to game down later. So I'm going to agree mm. with you on that one. And I'd say five, maximum six rounds. This doesn't pass six rounds, but it's anywhere between three to five rounds. He gets him out there. 
Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, fair, uh, fair enough, mate. Then we've got Gary Cully, 16 and 1, 10 knockouts, coming off a defeat to Jose Felix. But Reese Mould, 18 and 1, uh, looking good, six knockouts, uh, lo- um, and one defeat. But, uh, y- you know, you know, Reese Mould, uh, is only lost to, um, Lee Woods. So, I mean, no shame in that. So, Bear with me, I'm just getting my charger. Sorry, my bad. Yeah. But yes, C- C- um, Cully's coming off that defeat. Um, as we've seen in the in the public workout today, he's he's having his hands up higher than he normally, because normally he was sort of a hands down sort of sort of box like that, like you know, to, towards Bonnymore. Damn, um, I reckon Gary's gonna be really cautious this fight. Um, he will be cautious. Uh, potentially Reese Mould is a bit of a banana skin. He's he's awkward. He's slick, but Mould won't be scared to stand and trade as well. And after seeing Cully's last performance, he got hurt and got clipped. But I think it'll be it'll be hard to drag Cully into a sort of dog fight this time round, only due to the fact that Cully got not uh, got stopped last time, got badly uh, beat against Jose Felix. Um, so Carly will have his hands up high this time. I think he'll be really cautious. I think the early rounds, I think definitely he'll be cautious. I think it'll be a bit like Joshua against um Franklin and Helene. It's a bit really cautious. Oof. Like really cautious. Uh, I don't think he'll be Reese Mull will try. I reckon Reese will try Reese can box, but I think he'll try to get him in that dog fight due to the fact that last time you saw what happened to Cully when he stood and traded. But the usual saying, you don't stand and trade with a Mexican because you all tend <laughs> to get clipped. But yep. Reese Mould's a potential banana skin. Don't Anyone out there, don't be surprised if Reese Mould does it. I'm telling you, Reese Mould will try and upset the apple cart. And in my opinion, he might. But Cully will start off Cully will try and get that jab going and he will be have to be switched on for the whole fight because if he switches off, he's gone. Um, whether Cully can stay away from the dogfight and if Reese can get Cully into that dogfight, Mould wins. But if Cully sticks to his boxing and keeps his hands up, he wins this fight. Um... I'm just gonna try like hear your thoughts, and that might make me like, yeah. up. you know what I mean? Because I'm I'm debating between this one. I just want to hear what you say about this. I, one. I think I'm same with you. I'm on the fence. Gary Cully, I've seen him for his last few fights, uh, probably half a dozen of his last few fights. Really good fighter, standout professional. Reese Mould, as you say, only losses to Lee Wood. Great, great fighter. Honestly, like this is a 50-50, Ireland versus England. You want to be biased here and you want to say you want the Brits to win well, you want the Englishman to win in a way soil. But again, you're going to Irish territory. So it, it's a hard one. Gary Cully, look, if, if you would have handed me this fight two months ago, I said Gary Cully, more breaking it down, closer and closer it gets, more of a 50-50. It was always a 50-50. It was always a close fight. It was always a great matchup. But who do I favour in this matchup? I favour Reese Small because it, it is to his style. And as you said, even read into the hands down and the hands up. But I, I, I think Gary Cully wins this, but you cannot let any of these fights go to decision. As being, okay, last time Chantal beat Katie, clearly, and we'll get onto that in a minute. But when you go to away territory and when you go to someone else's backyard and when they're a the hometown favourite and they're the home nation, mm. you really want to be getting a shutout, clear performance, if not a knockout. So... Reece Smalls got to beat him clinically and he's got to stop him if not Gary Cully gets this by decision, in my opinion. So who are you saying, Cully? Ah, I ah, this is I want to stay on the fence for this one, but I don't want to use that as a cop-out. I want Reece Small to win, but I see Gary Cully win. To be honest, I, I'm like you. Like I kind of just want you to say... You don't mind whoever wins, honestly. It's a great yeah, contest. Yeah. I like both as well. Um... I can't pick a winner. That's the thing. It's a coin flip, honestly. I may as well just get a coin and quickly toss it and see what side it lands on. I've got one right here. 
All right, right, okay. For me, I'm gonna say heads Cully, tails mold. Flip it for me. Uh, tails. So, um, mold. We're both going mold. Both yeah. going for the Englishman. <laughs> Yeah, literally, it was a flip of the coin, yeah? <laughs> yeah, you saw it right here. Nothing dodgy. It's a yeah. fun coin. T Tails it is. So, mould. Um, you know what? I'm going to say mould. I don't think... If it goes points, I reckon Cully will get this because Cully's going to be oh, cautious. Nathan. But um, Reese could get him in that dogfight and I think eventually he might get in that dogfight might be silly enough to get in that dog fight. I know surely he's learned. Surely he'll keep his hands up, but who knows when you swing in and if Mould's backing him up to the ropes, then he'll start firing back for Cully. If Cully stays disciplined, he wins. But I think Mould, just based on the coin toss, I'm saying Mould round eight. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if Cully wins. I don't think Cully knocks him out because if Cully... Sticks to his boxing, he wins this. But it's where the Cully gets in that drag, gets dragged into Reese Mould's fight. Then Reese wins. But I'm saying Reese Mould due to the coin toss. Just. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, blame the coin close. toss if it goes wrong. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Faulty coin, that's what I'd be saying. Right. <laughs> then we've got another fight where you could literally toss the coin. You could toss the coin for many of these and it could go the other way, such as Cooney, Gaynor and Mar Marcy Brennan. Just, in my opinion, just being a bit biased, every single fight is a coin flip apart from Vizioli's. But that's also a coin flip because he's fighting someone that's 3-1. But <laughs> yeah, I do see Vizioli honestly, winning the debut. Who knows? Um, yeah. But, yes, we've got Paddy Donovan, 11-0 with 8 KOs. Looking good, looking. He looks slick against Sam O'Mason, and Sam's a decent fighter. Beat Tom Hill as well. He's had some good wins. Um, he stopped more um, Mason quicker than Dalton Smith, but of course that was one sided beat down as well. Um, but Danny Ball is the English champion. Um, I do have um, a soft spot for Danny, of course. I've had him on the channel, spoke to him quite a bit, and um, yeah, very good guy. But honest, honestly, he's a good fighter. Um, Thirteen wins, six knockouts, one defeat, one draw. But his one defeat to Echo Essuman, who if you've seen the knockout against him, Echo uh, was in. Echo was a is a beast, and we know that. But look at Danny Ball, who he's beat. He's beaten Sam Gilly. Yep. Um. Jamie he's Robinson. He's the Commonwealth champion. Yep. Yeah. And he beat Mason Cartwright. And he's also beaten Jamie Robinson uh, for the English last time out, which, no offence to Jamie, because I also like Jamie quite a bit. He's a good guy. But for me, it was only a one-sided fight, really, that fight. I think Danny looked clinical. He did put him down in round two, um, that fight. Um, he looked slick, and I knew it was just about time I think I can't remember what happened, but I think the towel got thrown in from Robinson's side after round eight. They just pulled him out, which was fair enough because it was getting too much for him. But Danny looked good. Danny's looking good. After that echo fight, he's looking good. He's looking slick. He's looking strong. Paddy's good as well. Um, I can't see Ball getting a decision win. Um, yeah. <laughs> again, it's a toying cost. They both can hit... Um, if I have to edge to, do you want to do another toy cost? <laughs> I, you know what? I'll just, I'll go, I'll back Danny. Yeah, whether he gets the stoppage, who knows? You know what? I'm not gonna say stoppage or points for this one. I'm just gonna say a Danny Ball win. But again, and I'm agreeing with point. you on that one. Although I do favour Paddy Donovan not only being in Ireland good. again. There's a there's a lot of Irish versus Englishmen on this card, oh, which I really do like. Next weekend as well in the um Gil Conlon card, which is pretty much oh, most yeah. fights are England Britain. So I mean, England Britain. I mean, what am I on about? England, yeah, no, you're good. It's happened before. Day. Yeah, no, it has. It has been a long day. It happens to me a lot at the show, so I'm not forgetting names and everything goes around mm. here, but. Yeah, um, no, 100%. Look, 
Paddy Donovan is 11 and 0, and I don't know why I put a little bit of an Irish accent there saying the surname. Anyways, <laughs> like I said, when, when you're in a hometown, first of all, you, you got that back in. The second thing is the undefeated record, but this is a clinical fight. Like you said, Danny Ball, Paddy Donovan, there's so many stacked fights in this card, and matchroom fighters, matchroom fights do this, even small hall shows do this. It's it's unreal the, the amount of fights you got on here before you get onto the main event. Like I said, I favor it, but. It, I, it's, I'm doing it again. I favour Paddy Donovan without putting on the Irish accent. And uh, Danny Ball, yeah, I'm going to back the Englishman. And yeah, I'm going to go I'm gonna go with Danny Ball, although I'm supporting him. I just have a feeling Paddy does it some way, but I want Danny Ball to win. So who are you saying, Danny? I, I want Danny. I just see Paddy doing it, doing the job, but I'll be over the moon if Danny proves the upset. To be honest, in this fight, there's not really an upset. There is, because you're upsetting the Irishman and the undefeated record, but they're both great fighters. So, so again, I want Danny. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with Danny. Yeah, I'm going to go with Danny. Got back back to Brit. Mm-hmm. So, we've got our main event. is the rematch between Shoutdown Cameron and Katie Taylor. Uh, for the IBF World Super Lightweight, IBO, WBA, WBC, WBO. Um, yeah, all the marbles. The undisputed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the unified. unified. Uh, and they're for Cameron's belts again. Um, of course, yeah, last time do you out, think they should have been at a different weight? I think they think... should have done it for Katie's. I mean, Cameron put her, her uh, undisputed titles on the line. I think it should be Katie's go for... Uh, uh, Cameron's got Katie's belts. Wait. Wait, what weight's this at? Uh, super lightweight. Yeah, but as in Cameron just got their foot, but the, but the last fight was for Cameron. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, what what you meant, yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. We just got a bit confused. All good, yeah. that <laughs> Like you um, said, it's been a long day. Last time, Cameron, I thought, looked really good against Katie, um... Even in that last fight, I think Cameron looked pretty good. Um, can't lie. I had Cameron up. Of course, we've seen some dodgy decisions in the past involving Katie Taylor, but they have been close. So I wouldn't say robberies. Katie Taylor, some people are saying Katie Taylor made women's boxing. I, I wouldn't go against that statement. I think what Katie Taylor's done for women's boxing is elite. Absolutely elite. And fair play to her as well. Because she, she is incredible. I think, but I think Cameron had her number in that last fight. Um, could it happen? I mean, could Taylor potentially get a, like a dodgy decision? You know, a home down decision. Because, I mean, in a way, I mean, I'm a Katie Taylor fan and a Shelltown Cameron fan. I like both. But I would like to see, I would like to see a trilogy, you know? You can't beat a trilogy. Um, but even if Katie does lose, she's had a great career. You know what I mean? If whatever happens, if Katie wins, if Katie loses, she's had an outstanding career. Look at her resume. She's never ducked anyone, always been in the like in the best. I'm acting like she's lost, but she hasn't lost yet. But yeah, no, she, yeah, no, of course. But I do see what you mean. She's incredible. Shell Town's incredible as well. I think it will it will be I think it'll be a better fight than last time. I do. I think the first fight was pretty good to watch. I think this one's gonna be even better. As uh, if I'm having I'm gonna say split decision. You know what I mean? I think the key. You know, part of me is thinking it'll be close. And part of me's thinking that they could give like a dodgy decision. Yeah. But in my opinion, I have Cameron up on the card. So it's a bit of a potentially Taylor could win a dodgy decision. You know what I mean? But I would have Cameron on the card. So people would think Cameron's won, but a dodgy decision could go yeah. Taylor. I'm going to go split. Um, I am going to say Cameron due to the fact she did get it last time. So you can't, you know. And it was tight on the cards, and I think it will be tight again on the cards. It'll be, you know, your 94, your 96, 94 Cameron, 95, 94 Taylor, and 95, 94 to Cameron. It will be one of those. I think it defo will be a split decision. I can't see 
people are saying there's going to be a stoppage from Cameron. There won't be a stoppage in this fight. Trust me. Mm, no, um, no way. Defo going the points. In my opinion, 100% will be split. And I'm going to say, shout out Cameron does it again on a uh, split decision. What about you, Andrew? Uh, 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 my head, my head wants Katie Taylor, but my heart says Chantal Cameron does it. What I say is always in boxing and in MMA, when someone has the better of someone a first time, for example, I go Cody Garbrandt, TJ Dillashaw, I'll go to so many other fights. You have the exceptions such as Andy Ruiz, Anthony Joshua's, but a majority of times in the first fight and in the rematch, it is tend to go the same way. And I don't know where this fact came from, but on Twitter, okay, it's MMA, but Daniel Cormier came up with the fact when a champion becomes a champion, a new champion, they, they get 30% better, which I don't know how you can calculate that. But anyways, um, I believe Chantel's got even more confidence coming into this one than she had the first one. Again, the last one was... Perfect. It was 6-4. I agree with it. Watching it back mm. in a moment, it was similar to the Fury and Garner. You, you're thinking Katie's just done it, but in, in actual fact, and Garner done it there in this situ situation and scenario, Chantel done it. Look, look, from the bottom of my heart, I love what Katie Taylor's done for women's boxing. I love they what she's done for boxing in general. They both look sharp as well, don't they, earlier? They both look yeah, sharp. Yeah, I saw that today. Yeah, that, that was great. I saw Sky Nicholson's, saw Giorgio's. Really, really well. Really great fighters. And you know what? They're both up for it. It's in the hometown. I, look, the Irish almost made me deaf at your call cheering for Adam Aaron McKenna. So mm. I don't know what they're going to do in that arena. But... Uh, I I want Katie to win so badly, but I so you're truly gonna, as a boxing you're fan. You're gonna go the other way and say Taylor. You're gonna say Katie for this one. No, no, no I'm I'm going with Chantel. I've, I've got back. It's not only back in a British girl. I see Chantel repeat just yeah. the way she done it last time. Beautiful clinical performance. Shut out, not shut out, but a six four. It won't be a close one. It will in most people's minds, but it'll be like Chantel's just done enough to get it done, yeah. and I I don't see. Katie getting the better of her the second time, although I love what Katie's done for women's boxing and boxing in general. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, that concludes our predictions. Some interesting ones, some we've gone against um, the odds. Um, and um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Be a great night of boxing live on the zone. And um, Andrew, it's been a pleasure as always, mate. And uh, make sure you sub or make, make sure you all subscribe to Anything Blows as well. Thank you, Sam. And make sure I'm just checking the count. And now we're on 299. So the next person to subscribe would be 300th. And yeah, thank you, Sam. Don't forget to subscribe to um, SWS Boxing. He's only about 210, 220 away from that 1K mark. So almost <laughs> there. So yeah, and thank you for having me back on, Sam. And we will re catch, we will catch up and I don't know, I've, I've, I've lost the word. We'll, yes, we'll right. catch up and um, analyse the fight either on a Sunday or next week. And for the rest of the guys, if you're not watching, tune in on the Zion Matchroom because this is a sold-out event. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you for your time, mate. Cheers, Sam. Bye.